Hey guys, this is Faye from Face World Media. I'm really excited to introduce Adobe Firefly, and this is the web version to you, especially if you're a creator, a small business owner, there is so much you can do. I use it all the time for my YouTube thumbnails, for all the work I do for Face World and for my clients. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use these incredible Adobe Firefly features, then export your creations into Adobe Express to do more like text overlay, whatever you wanna do with it. So with that said, let's get started. So the main features I'll be covering today is text to image, image to video, and then generate sound effects. Let's take a look at them one at a time. First is text to image. You have different models you can play with, not just Adobe Firefly, but these other ones as well. The difference of the Firefly models include the four ultra and three, some of these earlier versions. For now, I'm going to stick with Firefly Image 4. You can also choose the size. I often use widescreen, which is 16 by 9. And next, the type is you can choose either photo, where it's art, or you can choose auto, which is going to decide it for you. Visual intensity is about adjusting the overall intensity of existing visuals characteristics to your image. You have probably seen a feature similar to this inside Adobe Express. Here you can upload an image, but you can also browse the gallery. And what it's going to do is use your image as a reference to create the new one. The style of the image kind of in a similar way. If the image you upload is more like a clip art versus a photo versus a watercolor painting, it's going to leverage that as well. Next is effects. You can focus on what's popular at the moment movements, themes, techniques, etc. So I'm going to filter, just kind of show you what all the effects are. Fantasy, glitch art, so much to choose from. Wow, that's really a lot. Next is color and tone. Black and white versus cool tone, monochromatic, muted. Because there's so many options to choose from, when I use AI tools, especially something I'm kind of new to, I tend to want to take my time and actually try different variations. I know it's really important not to give up on the first shot. Next is lighting. You have golden hour, backlighting, you choose it, camera angle. So we have the close up. For example, we have shallow depth of field, shot from above, below. I really like these angle shots because sometimes when it comes to AI images, they can look a little generic, too similar. And as you continue to generate them, even using Dali inside ChatGPT, for example, it's just hard to manipulate the camera angle. Here, you can actually choose from these options. It is definitely a huge plus. All right, let's get started. So what we're going to do is enter a prompt. In case you're new to this, you haven't really used prompts as much inside Firefly, what you can do is actually take a look at these quick tips on how to create stunning visuals inside Adobe Firefly. Let's just use this one. What is strength? Adjust the strength of outline and reference. I realize that we can pretty much use the same image if we want to. So you can see the same image I have used for style reference as well as composition. So Han Dynasty, Chinese Empress, sitting in a park. Let's hit generate. Let's see what we got. And in the lower right-hand corner, I can choose to view the image very large or in a smaller grid. Here are some of the prompt features. You have prompt suggestions. Suggest certain words and phrases you can add to it. All right, so here we go. Look at these ones, Chinese empresses sitting in a park. All right, not bad. So now I want to really turn up the angle shot. So let's have a close up view. Now, if I generate again, it's saving the previous entries, which is really nice. So closer up shots. We have an extra hand there just now. Whatever you add, it's saving. It's not getting rid of other tags and prompts you had earlier. You can always do clear. And now we can have very different styles. These are honestly pretty cool. I really like the abstraction there. We also have fantasy, minimalism, industrial, modern art. That's fascinating. So these are art, obviously. When it comes to photo, you still have a lot of effects to choose from, but let's take a look. 
By the way, I noticed these prompts are going by pretty quick. Just by entering a prompt, you get these results very quickly. You can download all of them, use different settings, rerun them. Facing forward, if I just do that, you see a lot of them are kind of back facing us. You can build on your prompt very easily and quickly. Let me know in the comments below some of the prompts you have tried for the work you're trying to do projects. What I find really interesting as I'm learning how to use these tools is not to drill too deep into a project that's super niche. I want to see how a particular tool is doing for a variety of projects because ultimately that's more realistic to why we may subscribe or even try an AI tool to begin with. All right, now I'm having fun with text to image. I am really curious about the next thing. So I'm going to go back to home right now. It's time for text to image. This feature creates five second videos. Okay. It's not five, 10 minute videos. And in these resolutions, you'll be using a hundred credits per different resolutions of generation. So obviously the higher the resolution, the more credits that you'll be using. So I'm just going to start with the lower resolution ones. As you're learning these tools, I would recommend that you start with lower resolution so that you can actually save on credits until you figure out what's going on. Right? So these are five seconds that you can't really choose from them. You can do the shot size, extreme close up, close up, medium, long, extreme long shots. If you're into documentary filmmaking, you will know what it means. If not simply play with them. I think they're relatively self-explanatory and you have different motions and, you know, zoom in different styles, 2d, 3d, anime, black and white, cinematic claymation, fantasy, line art. Okay. Two cute panda bears. Look at these handheld tilt down. I am very curious to explore the next feature, which is text to sound effects. Look at this. This feature used 10 credits per generation, which is a lot less than generating videos. And each generation outputs four different variations up to 30 seconds long. If you want to build on that, you could generate multiple outputs, but when it comes to sound effects, they're rarely more than a few seconds long. Let's take a look, upload it here. You have the option to upload media, audio or video to compose sound effects on. These are the supported files, All right? So voice performance, this is optional. When I ended up recording my own voice, it actually introduced a lot of confusion to the sound effects. It was making a lot of kind of weird noises. So I just took out my voice performance because honestly, I don't know how to use it accurately just yet. Instead, just in a prompt alone, I entered sound of spring piano music. I'm getting something really interesting. By the way, you can over. You can just download, you can add it. You see the moment I click on it, you can add additional tracks, like up to five altogether. You can overlay them. You can move them around, for example. All right, cool. Text to vector. I have to try this one. Add a reference image to match. Okay. Start generating here. Let's add a reference image. Flat design. Doodle. All right. Comic book. Let's try that. Text to vector. That's exciting. This is pretty cute. It's definitely very different than the reference image. Let me pull it up for you guys. But you do see some similarities, right? So you can see the hairstyles as well as the color, which the background color is in silk. And that's why you have the yellow golden treatments here. So I would say definitely it's reading from that. And I'm really curious what the doodle is going to be like based on the reference full body. So instead of just a cropped headshot, I wonder if it can produce a full body effect image. Look at that, the doodling. <laughs> These are so cute. I would say they're truly adorable. Something I might actually use just for certain marketing materials or something to create for children. And a lot of adults have asked us if and how we can potentially create more childlike images from her artwork. So that's definitely something worth considering. Translate video. 
Look at the translation. This feature uses five credits per second per language. Something to keep in mind. You don't want to translate necessarily a very long video. Let's take a look at how many languages being supported here. All right, in the Asian language arena, I see Japanese and Korean, but not necessarily Mandarin Chinese just yet. There is Spanish. So translate audio and video into another language. To get started, upload a file that's five seconds to 10 minutes with speech only in one language. All right, so I have a very short video. After winning as part of Pride Worcester, I'm just gonna upload this video and see what happens. Language, let's translate into in Spanish, there's so many different versions of it, which is really interesting. Let's just do Spain and look at this transcript. I already got the transcript, which is great. This will use 75 credits. That took about a minute, maybe a little less. Let's see what happens. Después de ganar la corona, pude pasar mucho más tiempo con la comunidad, que es realmente la razón por la que decidí participar en el concurso en primer lugar. Quería conectarme más con una comunidad que er de la que no he tenido la oportunidad de formar parte tanto. All right, so I thought it was pretty smooth. Even the sound, the voice sounds like the original speaker. Now it's not lip synced. It's just something to keep in mind. But I think generally the quality is quite good. Whenever you are ready to download the image, there are different options to choose from. There's a download button, pretty high resolution as well. You can zoom in quite a bit on this image. You can also open in Photoshop web. Now there's a third one. You can add it to favorite. You can give it upvote, downvote. I would say give this one a downvote, for example, and you can submit your feedback. Click on the share options icon here. You can now either copy the image, submit to the gallery, or you can open it up in Adobe Express. You have this option for all the features I've shown you today because this allows you to directly integrate with your workflow from within Adobe Express. You can share it with your team. You can publish to social media, for example. And that one extra step having to download and upload is not nearly as efficient as what we're looking at here. And of course, within Adobe Express, as loading right now. There's more you can do. For example, you can use such as remove background, erase certain elements that you do not want. If I want to remove this piece of wood here, I can click on that and choose the brush size. Let's say I don't want this in this image. I'm going to highlight that and simply choose remove. You can use Firefly to create and generate these images and you have the ability to further manipulate and make revisions as needed. Look at that. So here's a result that is supernatural. I'm very happy with this. You may notice every time you go into these text to image, text to video that you lose the previous generated history. Don't panic. What you can see here under the homepage is that you can go to files and you will see all the things that you've generated previously. Literally every single image video is saved. Let's take a look at some of the videos that we generated. For example, this one right here. Remember the Panda one? So I'm going to click on the three dot and then I'm going to choose open right here. And from here, I have the option to download. So I hope you guys find this video helpful. I want to slow it down and show you the tutorial without rushing through all the steps. I'm also learning with you guys for the first time. So if there's specific features you like or prompts you find helpful from within Adobe Firefly, please let me know in the comments below. I love this kind of two-way street and we can learn these tools together. I also want to focus on how these tools can help us as creators and small business owners, give us realistic prompts and reasons to use the app, what it helps to solve in terms of social media, maybe your ad campaign. So excited to hear from you guys until next time. Bye.